Getting into the Pokemon trading card game is easier than ever before, but with dozens of products, multiple formats, and thousands of cards to choose from, where do you start? If you're building on a budget, then there's always the trusty theme deck. With a bit of cash and a lot of creativity, you can build something bold and battle ready. You're watching Deck Boss. Hi everyone, and welcome to Deck Boss, the show where we take classic theme decks and give them a competitive tune-up. This week, we're going to try and supercharge the Luminous Frost theme deck from Burning Shadows. Luminous Frost is an underwhelming theme deck at first glance, and at the second, offering a decidedly average lineup of cards and a fun but forgettable blend of water and fire type attackers but it did help to herald one of the better anti-meta Pokemon in the form of Alolan Ninetales, the Decidueye of its day, and while it's not the most explosive theme deck out there, it definitely has the potential to grind it out. Now, let's crack this open and meet our deck boss. The Luminous Frost theme deck is built around Alolan Ninetales. This Frosty Fox is a stage 1 Pokemon with a single attack and one very powerful ability. Its only attack, Aurora Beam, costs 1 water and 2 colorless energies to do 80 damage. Its ability, Luminous Barrier, prevents all damage and effects of attacks by opposing Pokemon EX and GX. As far as deck bosses go, Alolan Ninetales is the epitome of a niche pick. It's a stage 1 Pokemon, so it's not too slow to get out, and its ability does shut out two thirds of the special Pokemon currently in the game, but in 2021, its cons definitely outweigh its pros. It has a measly 110 HP, its only attack is weak and expensive, and Luminous Barrier does not protect it from Pokemon V. To make Alolan Ninetales work in 2021 is quite the challenge. It needs heavy support to deal with Pokemon V, and even most single prize decks. Energy Acceleration is a must, and we need to buff its damage to at least acceptable levels. If we can do that, it might still find some use in a world where Tag Team GX Pokemon are still a force to be reckoned with. Now let's jump back to the theme deck and see what it gives us to work with. Luminous Frost is a theme deck that's geared towards grinding down the opponent through bench sniping and stacking damage. To that end, this Kingdra is arguably its biggest playmaker. It has two attacks, both of which are incredibly cheap, and either leverage existing damage or do a bit of bench sniping. That said, the damage output is low considering all the setup it requires, and as a stage 2 Pokemon it's just too slow. Alolan Sand Slash provides some much needed draw power, netting you an extra card every turn. It's always a nice contender, but there are usually more efficient options available. Bruxish allows for some serious spread damage, but the attack is too expensive, and it's oddly limited to sniping bench Pokemon that share a type with the active Pokemon. It's just too slow, and the type restriction in particular is grating. Simiseer and Simipur offer a bit of energy acceleration, but they are a bit too slow as stage 1s and their damage output leaves much to be desired. And onto the trainers, the situation is decidedly below average. Your only good draw supporter is Professor Kukui, which offers some much needed damage buffing, but at only two cards that it's drawing from the deck, it will leave your consistency wanting. Wishful Baton allows you to pass on up to three basic energies from your active Pokemon to a benched one, which is nice considering the expensive attackers included in this deck. Rescue Stretcher and Energy Retrieval allow for some easy recovery in a pinch, which is always nice. Nest Ball and Timer Ball create a serviceable package for searching out your Pokemon, but the inclusion of an Ultra Ball would have been really nice here. And Escape Rope as your only means of mobility, which is fine, but I almost would have preferred the regular old Switch in this case. And as for the rest, don't worry about it. This theme deck is fine in theory, but in practice, it's just begging to be run over. Alolan Ninetales serves a very specific purpose, but that's not really leveraged by the deck's overall strategy. It's just so slow that it would probably lose to the majority of fire decks in the theme deck meta. Honestly, grab this deck if you're a collector, but otherwise, there's nothing much in here that makes it a must-have. I mean, seriously, singles are a thing, so get your Alolan Ninetales that way, okay? And now that we've got the basics, 
let's jump on over to PTCGO to see how we can make this deck work. Okay everyone, here's a functional, if highly questionable, build of the deck. I will be straight up with you, I tried and tested a hard stall version multiple times, and I can confirm that yes, people will scoop in the first turn or two if they have nothing but GX attackers on hand. Now, a version which includes treats like Altaria from Champion's Path and Shrine of Punishment was also very good at forcing scoops when it worked, but that's no fun, uh, and it was still kind of clunky as hell. So that's not the route I've chosen to take for the episode. But trying to make an Alolan Ninetales Turbo, or whatever, didn't exactly pan out either. As far as deck bosses go, it just hits like a wet paper towel, dies to any decent attack, and costs more than one cares to actually charge up. So, after getting very frustrated, I decided to break with the usual deck boss spirit of things and make a more evolved version of the deck, rather than a straight upgrade. It's about finding more than one route to victory, rather than just hoping to stall someone out, and I do like how it kind of touches on the dichotomy between regular Pokémon and their GX forms. But anyway, to kick things off, we're pairing the regular Alolan Ninetales with the GX version from Guardians Rising. It's got a few neat tricks, allowing for some bench sniping, a big old 160 damage attack, or a chance to heal effectively by moving all damage counters on it to the opposing Pokémon with its GX attack. It gives this deck some much needed muscle, allowing you to potentially 2KO certain VMAXs, which is critical considering the low damage output of the other attackers. I've also subbed out the theme decks Alolan Vulpix for this lovely one with Beacon. The Beacon attack is free and lets you grab any two Pokémon from your deck, which really helps in setting up your board early on. Zoroark GX was the other kind of out there inclusion. Uh, I don't like including promo exclusive cards or cards from expensive collector sets, because it's doubtful that somebody looking for a casual upgrade to a deck can get them, but boy, <laughs> this guy is just too tempting to resist when I saw a couple of them on offer for trade. Riotous Beating is a great attack, doing 20 damage for every Pokémon in play, hitting a respectable 120 damage for a single attachment of a DCE. But its trade ability brings a level of consistency to this deck that is nigh unparalleled. You can use it to keep drawing for key combo pieces, and crucially get water energy in the discard pile to accelerate with Aqua Patch later. Simply put, it's a great card, and it really helped make this deck workable <laughs> compared to what it was before. Tapu Koko is a fun inclusion, allowing you to do 20 spread damage to the enemy board for one DCE, which is great for softening up targets for Ninetales and Zoroark, and it also provides a nice free retreater, which can help you pivot around and choose your right attacker for the right moment. And finally, Tapu Lele GX makes its deck boss debut as my new favorite support Pokémon. Its ability to grab any supporter from the deck is just too good, and I like it because unlike Dedenne or Crobat, it can often serve as a decent enough backup attacker. So definitely expect to see a lot more of this card going forward. And on to the trainers, we've got a pretty standard draw supporter package here. Cynthia and Lily are our stepping stone draw supporters when upgrading a theme deck, and I have included the Professor Kukui from the original theme deck to offer a little bit of extra damage when needed. We've also got three copies of Guzma, which lets us shuffle around the board and line up an ideal attacker. The best use of this card in this deck is actually dragging up an enemy GX or EX into the active, while bringing up your own baby Ninetales to leave the opponent stuck and vulnerable to multiple Aurora Beams. Our Pokeball package consists of Nest Ball and Ultra Ball. For Zoroark to be a strong attacker, you do need to flood the board pretty quickly, so these provide accessibility to your Pokémon. Also, Ultra Ball is kind of a must because Tapu Lele must be played from the hand in order to get its ability off. Aqua Patch allows you to accelerate water energy from the discard pile to the bench, which, as mentioned before, combos well with Zoroark's ability to constantly have a ready supply of energy available for our Ninetales. Field Blower is there to get rid of bothersome tools and stadiums, in particular anything that buffs HP because, Ninetales GX aside, our damage ceiling is on the lower end, and you really don't want to be throwing multiple Zoroark at one 3 prizer, for example, if you can avoid it. Ordinary Rod provides a bit of recovery, in particular allowing you to get back the right Alolan Ninetales for your particular matchup. And Floatstone is there to provide some much needed mobility. Usually it's just there to sit on Tapu Lele, or to rescue a Zoroark GX when a Guzma is not on hand. And in addition to our basic water energy, 
we play the venerable double colorless energy to power up pretty much all of our Pokemon a bit quicker. It is mostly there for Zoroark and to a certain extent Tapu Koko, but it can also be used on either Ninetales in a pinch to speed up the rate of attack. And it gives Tapu Lele a means for defending itself as I mentioned before. And I mean honestly it's just one of my favorite cards in the game, hands down, so it was really an auto include here. And now that we've got our lineup, let's jump on over to the expanded ladder to test out this foxy frenzy of a deck.
Okay, guys, uh, I kind of need to get something off my chest. To put it bluntly, this deck broke me. I knew that this was going to be a tough nut to crack because of the game's transition to a more V-dominated world, including in the expanded metagame. And with the general speed of the game increasing as well, yeah, it was going to be an uphill battle. But I was not prepared for the me grinder that was building an upgraded list, specifically one focused on the actual deck boss, that could keep up with opposing decks. Generally, I always want to run a full playset of a deck boss to force myself to play around its strengths or weaknesses, but Alolan Ninetales being what it was created some issues that damn near made my head explode into a million pieces after a couple straight days of laddering to, well, not necessarily no success, but a lack of any compelling games uh, in most cases. Honestly, if I'd started this series a year or two ago, we'd be having a very different discussion, but in 2021, Alolan Ninetales just leads to some very bad games, regardless of whether you're on the winning or losing side. Now, I like finding games with a lot of back and forth, or at least an interesting matchup to showcase in these episodes. But Alolan Ninetales is just not conducive to that. Either you wall your opponent until they scoop after a few turns, or you get run over by anything that's not a Pokemon EX or GX because Ninetales as an attacker just leaves a lot to be desired. And even Zoroark... Now, I did try splashing in the Altaria from Champion's Path, but the inconsistency of the deck and the lack of muscle really killed it when it wasn't causing those turn two scoops on the enemy side. So at the end of the day, you kind of got two games that didn't necessarily highlight the deck boss's traits in particular, but I do hope still provided some entertaining back and forth, interesting decision making, things like that. If I'm being totally honest, I just don't think this is one theme deck you really want to pick up, unless you're a completionist and you'll want to have it sitting there on your shelf. Cards like Alolan Ninetales, the Hoopa from Shining Fates, and Decidueye, which I all love as cards in and of themselves, they exist in very specific moments in time, and outside of fulfilling a very niche anti-meta role in those moments, they are just a hard sell for even casual play. Even if I was just playing some casual theme deck games with my friends, I would be very hard-pressed to reach for my copies of Luminous Frost, upgraded or otherwise. But hey, I don't want to end on a sour note, so I am going to share some fantastic news with all of you. The channel recently crossed the 300 subscriber mark, and since I missed celebrating the 250 milestone because of the coof, I will be releasing a monster-sized episode of Deck Boss to celebrate this particular milestone. So please stay tuned for that in the future. It has been a labor of love over the last couple of weeks, and I hope you're all going to enjoy it when it does drop. Also, I want to congratulate a friend of this channel, Professor's Research, for a stellar performance in the Players' Cup with his sealed-only deck. What can I say, good sir? You are killing it, and you're making the sealed-only Pokemon community proud. And if you do want to check out another fantastic, kind of budget theme deck-oriented series, please check out TCG Tay's On a Budget Show. If you're a big fan of Deck Boss, you will definitely enjoy his slow and steady upgrade of the Galarian Surfetch theme deck from something pretty casual at the start to a much more competitive build as it goes. And really, that'll wrap it up for this week. I'm going to catch you all next time, and until then, take it easy.